Fantastic. We are live on day four, three, four. four. Okay. I don't do math, so this is the reason why. We are live, day four, Graph Expo, Printiverse. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yay. Uh, so today is actually, uh, our first panel is actually kind of a cool topic. Print Ninja Warrior, adapting to the new game. We're going to be discuss. You, you get it. You like my panel titles. I know it. Um, all right, Joanne. She helped me a lot. Um, in, on the Niagara Falls Ferris wheel, by the way, is when we were, we were brainstorming these. Um, so this panel is uh, really going to be about helping printers understand how they can make money in the new landscape that is the marketing and communications industry. We are constantly evolving. Um, we are constantly reinventing ways to communicate. We're still communicating, whether it was a cave drawing or something with augmented reality, we're still doing the same thing. We're trying to tell our stories. And the people on this panel enable us to tell our stories. And our cu their customers to tell their stories and the stories of their customers. But ultimately, it all boils down to a human to human experience. And that's what we do in the Printiverse. We want to have human discussions. So, starting off, GPA, if you could uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and the kind of conversations you're having about the industry over at GPA. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Oh, there we go. Might need a microphone. That probably helps. Um, and thank you very much for having us out here today. Uh, at GPA, uh, we're a specialty substrate provider. And in today's market, and especially with today's technology, advancing more and more, uh, becoming more and more digital, uh, we're providing uh, everything from uh, high-end paper products to uh, plastics that can either be run offset or digitally. Uh, and then it gets into the whole realm of uh, self-adhesive materials, including paper and films. You know, one of the areas, uh, and working close with a lot of our vendors, uh, the decor market, uh, is a huge market that people are uh, getting into, and Inkjet's going to play a very big role on, in, in that. And uh, so I think it was Betty Landa, everybody knows that guy, you know, uh, when he stated, anything that can be printed will be printed digitally. And, and it certainly is true, and with the technology that a lot of people unveiled in uh, Drupa uh, and the investments that customers are making, GPA is uh, making strides to make sure that we can keep up with technology to provide the substrates that uh, our customers' customers are looking for. Thank you so much. Avanti. Uh, so I'm with Avanti. Avanti is in the print, IM, print MIS space. What that means is that we give our customers better visibility into their business. Did I make any money on that last job that just ran? Uh, don't make me wait till the end of the month to see, figure out if I made any money. The conversations that we're having with our customers revolve around how can they increase their share of the pie and how can they uh, increase the overall size of the pie. And so we're helping them by providing tools that lets them move from uh, a traditional offset world and into digital, from adding in, dig in the digital space, being able to add large format, being able to get into fulfillment in mail, and, uh, and of course what uh, our value add is that we, we provide them one tool that, uh, that lets them do all of that. And thank you, and I'm sorry, um, I did want you to introduce yourself and say your name, even though I am going to refer to you by company moving forward. So you're Greg Kessler. Greg Kessler. The, the and then Stephen. And Steve McWilliam from Avanti. Thank you. And Helene from Arific. Hi, Helene Smith for Arific, for now known as Arific for the next uh, 40 minutes. Um, Arific is involved in, uh, well, Arific has very strong technology that um, is turning into applications. The most well known is Arific Pro, which allows you to get instant quotes for even high end custom jobs. The conversations we're having are about a, a new sweet spot um, for a long, for, we're still talking about the sweet spot in uh, short run and long run. And we talk about uh, sweet spots in, uh, you know, when do you buy that machine and et cetera. The, the, the secret sweet spot happens at the customer where we think the workflow really begins. And the story that doesn't get told and the story is the two to three days and more that people wait for estimates and that they don't need to wait any longer 
um, because Orific is one of those that um, is able to to make those those quotes turn around quickly. So um, we we feel it's important to call on uh, actual printers out there, where which is where we're from, um, to dictate the story a little bit more. Tell the press um, and tell people like Deb what you think the story needs to be. So when you've got a really great, fast, automated workflow and all these people do a great job of it, um, it doesn't doesn't mean a lot if your brand owner is sitting there waiting days and days for estimates to come back and to make a decision. So Deb also said we're going to talk about making money. I said it yesterday. If 30% of jobs go to the first quote, this is where you're going to make it. So I'm happy to be here with all of you. Thank you so much. Susan Xerox. Thanks, Celine. Um, hi, my name is Susan Weiss, and I'm with Xerox Corporation. I think most of you probably know Xerox. We're a manufacturer of hardware as well as uh, software products for the production uh, business. That's the area that I represent. Um, the conversations that we're having with our customers, whether they're purchasing our hardware or our workflow automation software, is all about how to capture more of those digital pages. There's you know 50 trillion pages being printed worldwide, but only 2% are digital. Digital, and there's a huge opportunity to really make those pages high value. So it's not just putting marks on the page and you know spitting out a short run which certainly is valuable in digital, but we want to take it to the next level. How do you really turn that piece, as Deborah was saying, into something that truly communicates It can help our customers, who are the printers, how they can help their clients actually be more successful? So those are the kinds of conversations we're having about those higher value uh, pages and applications. And I'm pleased to be with you today. Thanks so much. And um, John, who might need a little sun, I'm not sure. You, you look a little pale today. Yeah. <laughs> You're toning down a little. You need to get back outside. John from Adfos. Thanks, Deb. My name is John Palazzolo, and I'm with uh, Adfos. And what Adfos does and is really we, we kind of have a tagline, drying and curing at the speed of light. So what we do is we take our technology, it is a light-based technology, to dry and cure water-based inks, uh, coatings, whether it be inkjet inks or coatings on papers. And the conversations that we're having with our customers is they want to know how they can maximize their investment. Many of them have bought and, or have purchased inkjet presses. They've spent maybe in, you know, millions of dollars on this inkjet press. How can they do more with that? And what Adfos is is we enable them to run uh, higher gloss substrates, lower cost substrates, increase the speed of their inkjet. We had a customer, for example, who was using an inkjet technology. They were wanting to print on a high gloss stock, but due to the drying technology that was in their press, they were having to run their speed at 30% of the press speed. They integrated our technology into their inkjet press, and then they were running at 90% up to 100%. So literally a 3x increase in the speeds of their press. So also improve print quality. So people are just wanting to, to maximize their investment. They've spent a lot of money. How can I get more out of what I bought? Thank you so much. Kevin from Chile Publish. Hi, uh, Kevin Rubina from Chile Publish. Um, Chile Publish known as um, a high and online document editor that you can integrate in any kind of workflow, basically. And um, the kind of conversations that we're having here is mainly about three topics. Um, first of all is how to reduce your internal cost by doing more automation. I think a tool like Chili Publisher is definitely suited for that. Uh, but also how to generate more orders, um, maybe by offering different product offerings. And then um, uh, the last point is how to make sure that you can lock in your customer and become a more important partner of your customer. Um, and I've been giving some interviews over the past days and we were talking a lot about um, data management and how a commercial printer should be uh, capable of doing data management for their customers and then utilize that to produce more print work. Uh, thank you. Kevin, I'll actually stay with you if you don't mind uh, because uh, you touched upon some, some of my next question, uh -huh. <laughs> which is um, from your vantage point, what is required to be a profitable print business today and how are you helping your customers achieve success? Well, I mean, we had a couple of panel discussions, so I might repeat myself a little bit, but I, I think it starts with a vision. 
um, where you want to where you want to be in six months, where you want to be in three years. Um, I think a modern printer definitely has technical know-how, and I don't mean technical know-how in the equipment, which is also very important, but also on the software side of things. Um, um, being still quite young, I believe that a modern way of doing software is uh, not a turnkey solution. Um, that was 10 years ago. I think today what you try to do as an entrepreneur or as a business owner is you try to combine a couple of different pieces of software and you try to be in charge of that and you try to glue them all together that you can create a good offering. And I think if you master that, um, then you're really flexible. You're flexible to grow into different verticals. We were talking yesterday about how a commercial printer can get into packaging. I think there's definitely some opportunities there, uh, even in the carton folded products and so on. Maybe not uh, in the Flexo, but in the carton, there's definitely something to do there. Um, so I think that's really the, the, you know, where a, a, a commercial printer needs to focus on. And they can make two choices. Either they can build uh, a technical staff internally, if you're big enough, you should definitely do that. I think that's a preferred route. Uh, or you work with a good partner, and there's many partners out there who actually know the graphic arts industry quite well and also know about the production workflows and so on that they can tie back into. Thanks so much. We're going to skip to Xerox. Thanks. I think to be successful today, uh, printers really need to get inside the business of the customers that they're serving. Um, it's really about understanding what they're trying to accomplish, whether it's launching a new product, whether it's opening a new healthcare facility. Um, but they really need to understand what are those clients' objectives and truly, you know, align their capabilities and their offerings, whether it's from a, you know, print or an online perspective, so that they can serve those clients. And I think so often we have a tendency to get enamored with all the cool technology and all the wonderful things that we're seeing. It shows, um, like here at Graph Expo and that we saw at Drupa, uh, and sometimes it sounds so basic, but we forget to go back to, you know, who are the clients that are being served, what are those pain points that can be addressed. And I think if we had more people uh, kind of getting inside the minds of the customers that they're serving, it would, uh, it would help direct some of those decisions that they have to make, sometimes very significant capital investment decisions for hardware and software. But then at least they know they're making those investments uh, to help their efficiency and, and to help them be able to serve their clients in the most effective way. So for me, it's all about getting inside the minds of your customers. Thank you so much. Avanti. Jump in the queue, jump in the queue. I, I like to mix it up, I like to keep it fresh. Uh, there's a couple of ways, you know, it's all about profit. So the best way to be more profitable is figure out where you're making money. So you've got to, uh, we encourage folks to fire their unprofitable customers, but the challenge there is making sure that you know who those unprofitable customers are. So you need a really strong CRM or a tool set for the sales team and the whole company to know who should we be focusing all, our, all of our energy on. And then you can get funky about your, your, um, your business model in terms of uh, your commission structure for your reps. So the business that I don't make much money on, I'm going to, instead of a flat 8% of everything my print sales rep brings into the shop, I'll give you 2% on the stuff I don't make much money on, and I'm going to give you 10% on the stuff that I do make a lot of money on. So make sure that you know what's your most profitable products, what are your most profitable customers. The other reality is, even if you just want to, if you want to fight for that revenue level um, that you had last year, it means you've got to bring more jobs into the shop. But you don't want to have to, to bring those more jobs, shorter runs, uh, uh, more for more jobs. You've got to figure out how can I touch each of those jobs um, fewer times. My, one of my favorite quotes from one of my customers is, I can't afford to touch a $500 job 10 times. Uh, how can I limit that down? How can I get the number of touches of the job coming through the shop um, down. Thank you. Horrific. I, believe me, there's a method to my madness. Oh. <laughs> I'm going kind of doing the process here. Yes. So can we go back to the first question? I think there were two parts. From your vantage point, what is required to be a profitable print business today? And how are you helping customers achieve success? Horrific. How is Horrific helping customers achieve success? Okay, so again, um, um, we, this may be uh, a bit of a um, 
a sore point, but uh, maybe not a sore point, but just uh, something that's uncomfortable. What we see a lot is inside um, companies not talking enough to each other. So we've got the process uh, touching its each other. The humans aren't touching the process, right? But they're still not talking to each other enough. And uh, I personally talk to a lot of printers who um, are very hard pressed to tell me what's going on. Uh, you know who who the stakeholders are in the process that they work with all the time, whether it be inside their company or outside. Um, and I, I think there's also a lot of reticence on the part of older uh, companies that are run uh, by family businesses um, and executives who might be a little bit older to not really be listening to what um, the younger people have to say and what they're bringing to the table. And uh, it's, it's critical that they start doing that. I, I've noticed it at this show, especially the, the discussions about youth, about millennials are coming from everywhere. They've been here to a, a huge extent. And people are talking about it all over, and uh, I think we're we're at that point where it's turning, and um, and printers, uh, you, you know, you you need to really start talking to your designers, your your own people, and everybody involved in the process. Thanks so much, GPA. You know, uh, at GPA, we've built our uh, business on solving problems. You know, we had a campaign, Ask GPA. Um, Today's print shop, uh, I, I believe, if, if um, statistics, uh, if I've read something, it's about owners investing in capital equipment over the last few years aren't buying printing presses. They're buying flatbeds. They're buying wide format. So it, it's bringing a, a whole new realm of um, materials into their shop. You know, your customers, the printer's customers, as our customers, aren't dialing the phone looking for no's. They're dialing looking for yeses. So if you say no, you gotta follow it up with problem. No problem, we can help you out with that. Uh, so often if, if somebody says no, that customer isn't hanging up the phone and, and calling, you know, saying, hey, geez, we can't do this today, I guess it's not available. They're dialing for yeses. Whether it's a purple pressure sensitive paper or a, uh, um, you know, a wall graphic that's going to be removable seven years from now without peeling paint. GPA solves those problems for our customers, whether it's on a traditional offset press, um, a, a, a zero graphic uh, digital press, a flatbed, uh, a wide format inkjet press, and on and on and on. So um, uh, well, one thing that I, I hope comes out of the speed to quote becomes a, a lack of urgency on that printer's part. Uh, you know, it's so funny that so many times you quote a job and you tell somebody it's three days out for supplies, <clears throat> and then the order comes in and they say, yeah, we need it in two days. You know, maybe if those quotes go out faster, we'll get a little bit more breathing time on, on delivering substrates. And also, can I make one other comment? And if the quote is... You need a the, microphone. Mark. Sorry, if the quote is the definitive, accurate quote, it's going to go through the, the process is so much smoother. It's going to be optimized all the way through because it is the quote that was approved. So it's going to, to stay consistent and smooth and have less less problems and again less interaction all the way through. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. You good? Okay, we're gonna start this one with Xerox. Where do the tangible growth opportunities for printers lie in the next five years? How do your products and services support printers already in these markets and those looking to get into them? I think one of the areas that we're seeing a lot of growth and a lot of interest from our customers is in the, the whole realm of packaging. Uh, that seems to be an area that a lot of our customers are taking advantage of, especially from a you know digital perspective to be able to do short runs, personalized. Um, it's just amazing uh, what's happening out there. Uh, Xerox has recently announced uh, our direct uh, object printer. Um, I don't know if anybody has had a chance to see it, but it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, it allows you to be able to print on three-dimensional objects uh, relatively quickly and pretty cost-effectively. And that could be an add-on business uh, you know, that a printer could do to supplement some of their work, especially if they're working a lot, we think, in the retail industry. Um, but whether it's doing you know, short-run personalized packaging, um, 
for pharmaceuticals or for events. Uh, there's, there's really a lot that can be done with existing digital technology and then that even expands even more if you're looking at inkjet technology. So we're seeing packaging as uh, being a huge a uh, huge area where our customers are really gaining a lot of interest um, and also looking at using their uh, equipment, uh, like their iGen, for example, you know, to do some of those shorter runs in the packaging space, and they're doing it quite profitably. Thanks very much. Kevin? Chili? Um, oh, sorry. 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 Um, if I could actually um, continue on that, um, because we are actually sharing a customer together with Xerox in uh, the Netherlands called uh, the Boodlesum. And um, I think that's a really interesting case because what they did is they were traditionally into the magazine publishing business and so on. They're actually still doing that a little bit. So that for them, the challenge was to find a technology that could do you know, their current business today because they still want to do that, but also branch out to that packaging. And the use case of the Boodles is, is very interesting because what they do is they, they are in short run. Um, they basically set up a platform for pharmacies. So in Europe, you have a lot of independent pharmacies. And um, what, they need, what they do is they create their own creams and stuff like that. Rather than putting it in a white box where there is no logo, there is no content and so on written on, they want to start, you know, marketing themselves also as a pharmacist. And that's exactly what the Boodles has done. And what, it's really nice to see because you have a pharmacist ordering a package maybe five quantities and it's being shipped the next day out. And I think that's really the kind of growth opportunities there are. And especially if you are capable of setting up a clever platform that is going to differentiate you. Um, and within, I think within six months they went from 50 pharmacists to like 500. Um, so it's, it's really an interesting case. And I know there are big Xerox house, so we, we shared uh, the customer there. All right, John, Advos. Thank you. Um, so what tangible growth opportunities? I, I remember I was on a panel last year, and we were talking. And one of the things that Advos is doing is we're, we're looking at different market spaces, particularly functional printing, printed electronics. And I was on a panel, and, and someone said this to the commercial printers. They said, hey, listen, you know, this is happening. I mean, the, you know, printing is becoming a part of a manufacturing process, whether that be printed circuit boards, whether that be uh, 3D, you know, whatever that is. And, and this gentleman said, you know, kind of did a wake-up call. He said, listen, printers, he said, this is a technology that is used to manufacture products. And what's going to happen is one of two things. We as printers need to adapt and start printing things that provide a function or the manufacturing companies are going to get into the printing business. And so I think that's, that was an important part is looking at, again, whether it's, it's transferring from, from maybe a communications provider, print provider, to a, you know, going into packaging, new markets like that, but even looking at, at how you can take the technology that you have and do different things with it. And that's what Advos has been doing. Um, you know, again, traditional graphic arts is, you know, 90% of our business, but a good 10% of our business, and it's growing significantly, is in this functional printing space. And I think we, as, as, as an industry, really need to take a long, hard look at why are we doing it. Again, going back to vision, like they were saying, and knowing what that is. Thank you so much. Avanti. Uh, for us, my most successful customers are the ones that uh, see tangible growth coming from um, what Greg had said in the last question, figure out a way to say yes. Figure out a way to say yes to the customer request. It doesn't mean that you have to be in every line of business out there, but you do have to have that core capability to be doing things and then have a virtual team of folks that you can turn to so that you can get into, you can say yes to things like packaging or, or, or decorative and then be able to have a you know, part of that whole value chain um, that helps you say yes to your, uh, to your customer. Thank you. GPA. I uh, had a conversation with one of the leading uh, inkjet manufacturers uh, of the inkjet heads and, and to what John said, he wanted to know about industrial printing and uh, it is going to get into the manufacturing realm. So yes, the printer needs to partner himself with his customer and be a one-stop shop. He, he can't allow his customer to um, 
he'll buy his brochures here and his packaging somewhere else. Eventually that packaging printer is going to be doing his brochures. So um, being able to take care of all your customers' needs is key because with today's digital technology, you know, I've been at this for a while and I remember, you know, there was a trade show this big or bigger that was just for in-plant printers. You know, the, the whole chemistry and everything else, folks decided that they were in hardware, or they were in food services, they weren't in printing, so they shut those shops down. With today, today's technology, without the chemistry and everything else involved, I'm not saying that these new technologies are dummying it down, but it's certainly a push that button and out comes a, print of, a, a beautiful printed piece, and it's going to be a lot easier for industries to have a reprographic center that's going to have this, you know, a lot of this stuff in-house again. So printers need to stay very, very close to their customers and understand the different technologies they're investing in. Thank you. Horrific. Yeah, I think we also, again, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, um, printers have, uh, you guys have a lot of power in, um, I know this because I'm, I'm on the other side with the suppliers and with the press and analysts. You guys have more power than you realize in telling us what we need to be doing for you. So when we're talking about ch different technologies and incorporating new technologies, you need a lot of information before you decide what path you're going down. Do you test it by working with a partner and then start buying your own equipment eventually or something like that? So you need the analyst to give you the, the real data on what the future looks like. This, this this, uh, John, I think, is it? You were turning, or you were talking about uh, whether or not, you know, we, we uh, the manufacturers take that printing business or vice versa. This has been a conversation that people are afraid to have. But if we don't move and, and, and we're not, I used to think, like most young people in college, that we can all organize and get it done. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but let's at least ask the people who have the power, the press, the Deb, enormous power, to, to, to give us the information we need to have to to go into these other businesses and figure out how we're going to do this together and keep this this industry um, healthy um, and not lose like like John was saying not let other people take over these pieces before we get smart about it thanks so much um, every Wednesday on Twitter I host print chat from 4 to 5 p.m. and um, these Top, uh, panel topics that we have been doing um, the whole print of our show are the topics that the printers are interested in and I also crowdsourced questions from them for all of the topics because I think it's very important that I use to, you, to your uh, words my power to bring their questions directly in front of the people who can answer them because they don't have the opportunity like I never had. So I feel it's my responsibility. And in that, I do have a question from a print chatter from all of you. And remember, this is about how printers need to, and print service providers and you know even suppliers um, have to adapt to the new game. So with that being said, print chatter Richard Dannenberg wants to know, what does it take to be a successful marketer of print services in an electronic world? How has your company adopted its strategy and messaging to reach the digital natives? Let's start with you, Kevin. Um, I think there is some to learn from the agency world there, um, and maybe become an account manager towards your customers and have somebody who's, you know, who knows more than just print, uh, and then I'm talking about the salesperson sitting in front of the customer, and try to be able to grasp the entire story, and then take that back to the company, and then see, okay, how can we come up with a, with a relevant offering? You know, it might include some hardware, it might include some software, it might include some consulting work, and I think it's just having somebody talking to your customer who's captive to, to that kind of information and listens. And again, the agency world is, I think, a good example. Um, um, maybe in some cases a little bit too high end, but, but what they do is they listen to their customers, they try to get a budget on it, and they, they execute it. And often they execute it with a lot of partners. And I think in the printing world, that's something you can do. You can do, you shouldn't be afraid to, to go to your colleague down the street and say, hey, you know, maybe for this project we can work together. Um, I would just like to say, that was like the best answer ever, and thank you for that answer. Thank you. John, uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Thanks for the setup, Deb. Love no, you. No problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, kind of to that point, I, I remember there was a, a Dilbert cartoon many years ago, and the, the final, it was you know one of the Sunday ones, so there was a lot of different slides, but on the very last one, there was uh, Dilbert said, I think we're losing our, our laser-like focus on the customer. And uh, the spiky-haired boss did the, of the who? And, you know, to, to your point, too, you know, what is required? What is required is, is to really have that relationship. Business is still about people. You know, yes, electronics have done and, you know, social media and all of that stuff is great. That's an enabler to relationships. And having that relationship with the customer and really finding out what their vision is. What are they trying to do? What are their goals? What do they want to achieve? Asking the questions on the front end so that you know really what they're trying to do. Like you said, you know, a, a fully integrated approach to communicating, you know, it used to be a, you know, a three martini lunch. That's how it was done. Those days are over. You know, now it's, it's integrating social media. It's integrating print. It's integrating Twitter. I mean, all these different things are how people are communicating and how they're relating to each other today. And to be able to do that is crucial. So, so what is ADFOS doing, I think was the second part of the question is, is, is again looking at end to end. So we, we talk with the people who are on the front end, who are creating the, who are maybe the data content managers. We're talking to the, the people who are ripping these jobs if it's digital. We're working with the, the, the printers, the, the people who are providing the, the, the hardware to do that. We're working with the ink people. We're working with the paper people. We're working with the finishing people. Again, just to really go from end to end and not be so uh, laser focused on our technology, like you were saying. Te technology is technology. What's it enabling you to do? That's key. Thanks so much. And let's just come right down the line on this one. Susan, Xerox. I think that I'm sensing a theme here of, of you know getting inside the mind of your customer, and I'm I'm very passionate about that and the role that that I have at Xerox, um, and that's helping our customers, uh, you know, accomplish their goals and objectives and work more closely and get inside the minds of their customers. Um, one of the things that we do, for example, is we through our business development program we create vertical um, market kits so that it helps our customers understand what the trends and the challenges and the digital communication opportunities are in various vertical segments um, so that our customers, the printer, can go and have that more of a consultative conversation, ask those kinds of questions uh, that you were saying that, that are relevant to really uh, understand what they're trying to accomplish. Um, at the end of the day, for any Hamilton fans out there, you want to be in the room where it happens, right? You want to be part of the discussions that are taking place about those strategic goals for the company, about the kinds of communication programs they're going to be creating. You don't want to just be at the end, you know, getting the print file. Um, you want to be much further up front in that discussion, strategizing. So to the degree that, you know, Xerox, we can help, you know, our customers help their customers, uh, that's really what it's all about. And I would say our business development efforts Efforts, uh, our customer business development efforts support that. But it's having those conversations and getting inside the mind of your customer. Thank you. Helene, terrific. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I imagine it must be interesting for printers who have people um, that they have relationships with coming in um, and uh, in an old fashioned style saying, um, okay, you're ready for more of whatever it is, a substrate or a, 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 you know, an upgrade of uh, equipment or software. And those who come in and really sit down and want to hear the story that Kevin's talking about and the fully integrated experience. I'll tell you really quick, I very long time ago was got a story on the front of the New York Times because I worked with a, CP, a group of CPAs who taught CPAs how to look into each other's eyes and understand what they really need in life and said that you have to get this from your client and understand what all of their real, their needs are for their families. And it was so freaky, you know, the editor thought it was so freaky that that accountants were doing this and they were pretty panicked, you know, they were deer caught in the headlights, like relate to people and get that close, right. they were freaked out. And uh, you know, it was a front page story. But but that's the difference. I mean, the, the, the customer experience is hot, but you know what, it, it should always be hot. It shouldn't be a trend. It's like being there with them, getting the whole thing. I want to say about a you know, they're, they're a small company now, and um, they they have the luxury of going in and being everything and finding out everything about the customer. The, the, the companies that are able to keep that as they get bigger. And um, 
we know companies, Kevin and I know a company called Infocus that has been has done this extremely well. They stay really close to their customers no matter how big they get. Uh, I'm sure there's so many others. I just happen to know of that one. Um, it, it makes all the difference in the world when you're that close. You're part of their solution no matter what. They see you all the time. You're, you're, their, you're their friend. You're their best friend. Yeah. Thanks so much. Avanti. Uh, the key, I think the key to success uh, is really having an intimate understanding of the pain that your customer is going through. And I think one of the largest pain points these days is data. They're just absolutely overwhelmed with data. They need help in that uh, area. I talked a little bit about knowing who your most profitable customers are. Um, translate that down to your, your as, a, as a print service provider or as a marketing service provider, um, how, can you, how can you help them manage that overwhelming amount of data that's coming at them, uh, at them every single day? And the second thing I would say is, do whatever you can to make it really, really easy to do business with you. Uh, it, it, and how that's impacted us in terms of our strategy and messaging is make sure that we give them the tools to, for example, eliminate phone calls that need to come into the shop. Give your customer ability to do, do the things in a self-service way that they want to be able to do their, them, themselves. You know, just like the, the banking of analogy, there are some things you want to go into the bank to do, like negotiate a mortgage, uh, but there's some things you want to do via an ATM. Uh, you know, I just want to get cash out. I, I, don't, I don't want to come into the bank to do that. The same applies to the print shop. So make it easy for your customer to do business with you. Have a phenomenal web to print and portal where they can come and place an order, get a very quick quote, check on the status of a job, look at their inventory, um, do a quick look up on an invoice. Make it easy for them to do business with you and they will. GPA. I think uh, one of the panelists that was on here earlier was Trish, the paper folding queen. She was. She's not at Graph Expo last oh, year. I'm sorry. It's, anyway, it was a long she, night. She does. Yeah, it was. But anyway, she gives a uh, excellent uh, um, talk on marketing to millennials. You know, and and somebody hey, said Trishy. somebody said earlier um, that um, digital natives. I well, did. I'm a digital immigrant. <laughs> I have to get forced into the digital world. My wife tells me to call my kids if I'm trying to figure out how to print something on the printer at home. It really isn't that bad. But again, as everybody has stated, understanding your, understanding your customers is key. The other thing that's interesting is if you look at the average age of a print service provider, um, that, that sales staff is probably uh, 45 to 55, whereas the print buyer is 25 to 35. So when you have a 20-year um, gap in generations, uh, you got to teach those old dogs new tricks, and they've got to embrace the technology. We give presentations about um, the products that we can offer for uh, digital and one-to-one -one marketing, and, and um, you know, utilizing different platforms for multimedia campaigns. And, and I look around the table, and I see one guy going like this, and three guys with their eyes closing. And it's like. You really got to get into the game and, and embrace digital. And then as a substrate provider, it is called on-demand printing. And so being able to have the media there on demand when they need to print it is key. So we work really hard, whether it's um, paper products, label products, plastic products, to be able to support uh, these initiatives. The other thing that came out of that marketing to millennials is, you know, it's not always, it's not always this that they're looking to. From what I understand, they love junk mail. And I think every printer out here should love junk mail we as well. We call it marketing mail. When it oh, has a there you go. When it has a relative message, it's marketing mail. When it, has not a, when it doesn't have a relative message, it is uh, junk mail. To that, take, I'll put it this way. The junk mail is on a 20-pound bond or 50-pound offset. But you put it on a nice tactile, uh, felt finish material, and now they're not only reading something, but they're feeling an experience. So spreading out to different types of materials to do those mailing pieces, to get the campaigns out there, to get your message across is key as well. Perfecto. So I'm a fan of Survivor, and this is kind of where the next question comes from. Looking ahead to the next 10 years, if you had to vote one printing, printing technology off the island, which one would it be and why? And then we'll take some questions from uh, home. So, who wants to start? John. 
Anthos. <laughs> That's a wow. It's okay. Screen printing. <laughs> what? Screen printing. Okay. Um, because we're we're seeing again that that the technology, digital technology, typically a lot of screen printing are is shorter run. Typically, again, there are some long runs, yes, but but with digital technology and what you can do with it today, um, it is possible to get the speeds, to get the quality, to get the throughput. So if I had to vote one printing technology off the island, it would be screen printing. Greg? Well, much to the chagrin of Gutenberg, but probably offset printing will be next. In uh, 10 years? Well, no, oh, excuse me. In 10 years, probably not. It, it'll be... Um, it doesn't have to be... I mean, it could be any print-related technology. It could be a software solution. It yeah. could be a paper. It could be anything. Um, the fact that we're not into those type of uh, businesses, it would be tough for me to say, but I agree. Screen... Um, if it's a number game, screen would probably be the next to go. Um, all those uh, T-shirts can be done uh, with dye sublimation. So there's technologies that are coming out that will be just as good as uh, screen printing. I mean, they're not on the panel, but HP was printing T-shirts at another, um, yep. another conference a few weeks ago. Wow. They, were, they have the transfers now. Right. So they come out of, you already have the wide format printers. I mean, quite frankly, the wide format uh, printers are doing insane things that nobody knew that they could even do anymore. I mean, they're really going to push a lot of uh, the technology out. Stephen, Avanti. I don't know about um, you know listing a technology that uh, I think will disappear over or should disappear over the next 10 years, but that I would put more of a, a topic on what should disappear. Uh, anything that uh, in the context of the environment. So the, anything that could make print be stigmatized should be the focus area of vendors, in, either in the substrate space or in the printing space. Um, focus on eliminating anything that uh, has a negative environmental impact. I think that is a brilliant point because as we've sp uh, been speaking about these millennials, they're not, a, they're not playing with the non-environmentally friendly anythings. Helene, horrific. Yeah, well, thank you for that because um, I really love all technology, almost all of it, I think. But, um, but you reminded me that uh, Two Sides and Deb um, have been very um, successful lately in teaching people finally that um, we're making that dent that uh, trees you. are uh, using paper is is a good thing actually um, so we, we need to turn that around and, and just that education in and of itself is, is a, a nice uh, route going down going down the right path um, I'm I think all technologies that are being used for good are great. <laughs> Thank you. Xerox? Yeah, I think this is a, a tough one to respond to. It's hard to pick a technology that, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't want to see because if it's, if it's serving a purpose and working well for a customer, you know, certainly some of the older technologies, if they're fully depreciated, you know, I, I'd hate to say get rid of it if it's still, you know, helping them have a profitable business. Um, so I'll piggyback onto what, what Steve said and I'll do a vote for the, uh, you know, things that are, are not good for, an, for the environment. Let's get rid of those. Um, and continue with, uh, you know, the efforts to, you know, promote print. Uh, you know, paper's a renewable resource, uh, and there's, it, it can really help with those relevant communications. So I'd, I'd like to see it continue. Which is totally fair, because in Survivor, you create alliances and vote together. So that's totally cool. Okay, thank you. Good. But you still have to vote. You're getting voted off. I know you are. <laughs> Kevin, and then we'll take some questions from home, Sandy. Um, maybe to give another twist on it, um, I don't know if you guys are, are aware what Amazon is experimenting with, which is um, on-demand package printing and cutting. I do believe that for a certain segment of products in the in near future, um, especially consumables, um, you're going to see these big online e-commerce giants to be creating their own packaging to be able to ship it more optimized and print directly on it. Um, so you won't have 10 boxes going into one big box, but you have to, you'll actually have companies like Amazon just creating the box big enough for whatever you ordered that day in your shopping basket and then print on that maybe the logos of those uh, vendors. I really think that will be a future application that we will see within this and 10 years. Uh, we have time for one question, quick question from home. So I, uh, we had a, more than one, so I apologize to the people at home that we didn't get to, but we'll try to follow up. 
Sandy Hubbard. Okay. Question is, um, a lot of good talk about printers who can help their customers. Print companies want to know the, they're working hard to achieve their own quick and strategic growth. Who in their company should be analyzing the data and who should be involved in making those decisions? Anybody want to take that? Grab the mic. That's a, that's a tough one. You know, um, probably in sales or marketing. And what we find uh, a lot of times are that our customers, print service providers, don't really do a good job of marketing themselves. I mean, how many times have we gone into a printer and asked for a business card and they don't even have one of those, let alone trying to get the message of what they can do for their customers out to their customers? So I don't know that many companies employ that position right now to be able to give an honest answer to that. Uh, let's skip to Kevin and then we'll come back. Um, I think actually anybody in an executive role should be able to analyze and access the data. It's not just the business owner. Um, I'll, I'll take the example that we apply in our own company. Anybody with an executive role has to gather their data, has to analyze it, and has to make decisions based on that data. Um, I think that's really important. Today in modern business, you cannot make any decisions without having the data. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's moving too quickly. Uh, there's too much parameters that you have to take into account. And then just to one side note to what you were saying, um, it's funny when you talk about software, and they're trying to sell a software as a printer to one of their customers, but they're not using it themselves. Why don't you do it for your own marketing and branding, do it properly, and you'll have your first big success story that you can tell to your potential customers. Absolutely. Um, does anyone have anything to add? Or so, Go ahead. Was, was that question specific to the type of data I thought it was, or any data? Oh, okay. I thought it was about your own marketing and your own sales and who should evaluate the com yeah can you repeat that because okay so if your data. Your data. if you're trying to grow the company and you're looking at the data who should look at it so it's got to be the people who are willing to um, take punches and on behalf of the company and not be protecting and not about egos I think that's really important the people who are you know, put all that aside and, and be willing to stand up and, and be honest about what issues might be preventing them from, from uh, higher growth rates. Thank you. Xerox? Yeah, I, I, I believe it's the owner. It's the person at the top. Uh, it's their vision and their leadership that is going to position the company for the future. So I think they need to be the ones to be accountable for, you know, identifying the subject matter expert that can do the analysis if they can't do it themselves. But at the end of the day, they're the ones that have to make sense of it and use that data, use that current information to help them position their company for growth in the future. So to me, it's, it's, it stops at the top. Avanti. Uh, I think the answer to that question actually is everyone. Everyone has to analyze that data. I think it's a, a, a core skill that everybody on your team should have. They should be able to look at an Excel spreadsheet and, and get some data that they can turn into knowledge, that they can turn into intelligence and, uh, and make better decisions. And I think the best way to make that happen is make sure that everybody in the organization knows that that's important. So the message has to come from the top down that uh, this is important and you need to understand the data data in every part of you know your your role in the company there's data that matters and don't leave it to some young kid uh, that's uh, the new hire let's give him the, the him or her the job of analyzing the data you need to be able to do it yourself thank you so much thank you to all the panelists uh, thank you to everybody uh, who attended it's Wednesday and it's crowded in the booth yay um, our next panel is social climbing, reaching the top one show at a time. It's about social media, so it will be interesting. Thank you very much to all the panelists. If you go, uh, all of you have brochures on your chairs. It has the information about everybody up here. Or you can go to printmediacenter.com and find their alliance pages. And uh, definitely reach out. These are the people that can help you be successful. So thank you very much, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. One thing to that comment, though, is if, if uh, everybody's in charge, nobody's in charge. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you from Canada? Yes. Take off, eh? Uh, oh, yeah, I, 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 I got a, a couple of boats. Oh, yeah, you got yeah, a couple of boats.